Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick overview of something that has become especially important to us in the Social Studies Department here at Pine Richland. Um, you'll see the logo, essentially, of um, the Pine Richland Social Studies Department in front of you. Um, as you may have noticed as well, I have leaned heavily into the COVID facial hair department, um, but that's, I suppose, neither here nor there. Um, what we're looking at here, what you should be looking at, is uh, this particular graphic. And what this really has done is tried to give us a way um, across multiple social studies disciplines to examine the way in which we learn about social studies. So whether it's psychology, economics, U.S. history, world history, European history, law, um, all of these courses are able to be viewed through different lenses using this particular graphic. So I'm going to take just a few minutes here and go over some of the elements on this graphic itself. Now in class, we're going to be using this graphic as a way to analyze history in terms of this course itself. Um, what we've done is used the 10 um, themes here around the outer ring. These are themes that are established by the National Council for Social Studies, so these are not just something that we made up. But if you look at some of these examples, things like culture, global connections, time, continuity and change, meaning how things change or how they stay the same, um, individual development, identity, um, individuals, groups and institutions, uh, that could be governments, that might be religious institutions, that might be economic institutions, production, distribution, distribution and consumption. Um, how we use and work with resources that are both created by man and, and provided by the environment, nature, science, technology, society, things like the Industrial Revolution, which I'll get to in just a minute. But um, these 10 themes, these are different themes that are going to come up at various points in the year. Now, we might only be examining two or maybe even three of these themes at a time within any particular class period. It may only be one particular theme at a time. But we try to identify when we see these themes through different classes. Otherwise, history sometimes, especially if you ask your parents the way in which they learned history, it may have been just a listing of facts. Okay, memorize these things that happened in these particular dates. That's not really what history is about. Um, and that's not how we learn history best. We learn history best through narrative, through comparison and contrast. Um, through identifying how things have changed or how things have stayed the same. And so by using these 10 themes, we're able to gain a much better understanding of history than just simple memorization of facts. And that brings us to the next ring, uh, where you'll notice four different actions here, okay? Um, and this ring, yes, you can jump around a little bit, but to me, I like to think of it in a particular rotation. Um, first, we inquire, then we investigate um, the question that we are inquiring about. Then we evaluate the possible solutions and facts that we have at our disposal in regards to that particular question. Then finally, we act on that. Uh, we come up with an idea based around this information that we have inquired, investigated, and evaluated in order to come up with a truer understanding of that particular element. Um, act, I use the word apply as well. Um, Okay, so we learned that a particular civilization placed a heavy emphasis on religion. We evaluate the reasons why that civilization used religion so heavily. Why did the government try to use religion to uh, unify its people? And then we apply it. Okay, so if we have this concept of religion in, say, ancient Egypt and its importance to the power of the pharaoh, can we apply that same thing to, say, the French Revolution later on? Do we look at how the French government attempted to use religion to unify its people um, in the 1600s? That's an application of that idea that we have previously learned. And so that gives us the ability to develop different skills. Ultimately, five, 10 years from now, you might not need to know the information of relevant to the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. But if we're able to develop the skills in which we can use information to then compare and contrast across time periods, well, whether you're in the business world or academia or something else, you're going to be able to use that skill in order to help you out. And that's really what history is all about, how we use the elements of history to gain a better understanding of our world today and how we got here. Then as we move into this third ring here, 
we see a variety of images and these images really relate to the previous ring, how we inquire, investigate, and act. And I wanna draw your attention to uh, two particular elements here, the, the ones on the far left of your screen. Um, starting with evaluate, this concept of passing judgment on a particular element. Now, I think that sometimes we get caught up in what you'll hear referred to as revisionist history. The idea that we need to look at history and say, okay, well, this is bad because, or this is good because. And first of all, I despise those two words when it comes to history because that um, leads to a very dichotomous view where things are either black or white. And they really are mostly gray, historically speaking, where you have these elements that we need to be considerate of, um, but that don't necessarily just are the only way to look at a particular scenario. And I think one of the easiest ways that we can consider this is Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus, 1492, sailed the ocean blue, um, not on the Mayflower, please keep that in mind. Um, and Columbus is a very, very complicated person with a very, very complicated history and uh, historiography where we um, consider the way in which people from different time periods viewed Columbus. And this is something that's really important to look at as we go into acting on uh, the things that we learn. Uh, because there's a lot of controversy built around the idea of who Columbus was and his relative importance to the founding of North America, the United States, by European colonialists, etc. Um, there's no denying that during Columbus's time, first of all, I have to tell you this, um, a lot of history, and I kind of chuckle at this and smile because I kind of like it, um, history is about ruining your childhood. Um, history did not, or Columbus did not discover that the earth was round, sorry. Almost every educated person by the time of Columbus realized that the earth was round, okay, not flat. The ancient Greeks, the ancient Egyptians um, were studying the equator and estimating the distance of the equator. These people knew the earth was round, okay? Um, but where Columbus's importance lies is nobody knew how far it would take. Nobody knew how far it would take from Europe to sail west uh, and eventually reach Asia, which he obviously did not do. Um, that's where his importance lies, and it opens up this concept of the age of exploration. Now, the problem lies with the actual actions. If we take a very broad-based view and say, okay, Columbus landed in what is now the Caribbean. He never actually touches what will eventually become the United States of America. Again, ruining your childhood. It's fun. Um, but that idea of changing the way that Europeans are going to view the rest of the world, and we start with colonization and these kinds of things, we need to also acknowledge um, the fact that Columbus will eventually help to wipe out an entire civilization of Taino people in the Caribbean. Um, he will do things like cutting off uh, or advocating the cutting off of noses and ears in an effort to drive uh, production of precious metals that he is then going to bring back to Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain. So in understanding Columbus, we can understand from a macro view um, his overall importance to the development of colonization by European nations, but also we can evaluate the ethics of the way in which Columbus did those things. And that can help us to act. Do we consider Columbus a hero? Do we consider him evil? Um, whatever it may be, it gives us a better understanding on how to truly understand and appreciate historical events. And so by using this graphic, we hope to do those kinds of things. And uh, as we move into the next part, which is really a uh, kind of a compass, okay, as we look at this graphic in its entirety, but we have the four arrows here, right? And we're pointing north. Um, that's towards PR. That's where you are right now. That's your immediate community. But then we start to broaden things out from there as we move around in a clockwise rotation as we get to the state of Pennsylvania, the United States of America, the world itself. We need to be able to kind of shift lenses through history to be able to say, okay, here is something on a very, very micro individual based level and how it impacts history. But then we need to eventually broaden that out and say, okay, what are the implications for this particular group of people? What are the implications for the world at large? Um, and the hope is that throughout these courses um, in history here and social studies here at Pine Richland, 
we're going to give you the tools necessary so that you can develop that broadening or shrinking worldview, depending upon the conversations that we have. Uh, and so while graphics can be kind of cheesy at times, um, I really feel uh, as a history teacher and as a social studies teacher that it's important for us to kind of ground ourselves in more than just names and dates and events uh, and really start to look at the skills behind what we study and how we study it. And what are those implications for us moving forward? How do we become better um, analysts of history? How are we able to become better writers of history based on learning in these different modes. So I just wanted to take some time today and go through that with you. If you have any questions, you can always uh, give me a shout and ask me and I'd be happy to pontificate a little bit more on this graphic or anything else you might have. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.